Thank you very much, Justine, and a very good morning, good afternoon, dear colleagues. It's a joy being around you here. We've been deprived um, of physically meeting, but it's a pleasure always uh, to be um, uh, around you. This presentation is about the development of the methodology for costed uh, wash action plans in color hotspots. You may recall we presented earlier on that, and the purpose of this presentation is to update you on, on progress. Just as a little bit of background information to remind us all of what we're trying to achieve, this product is part of the GTFCC wash and national cholera plans work stream. Uh, it started in late 2019 with um, the kind support of CDC. Uh, the objective is of the project is to provide a replicable and standard method to develop wash cost of plans and color hotspots. Wash plans are unfortunately oftentimes too generic and costly and not tailored uh, to the cholera hotspots, which may at times compromise advocacy efforts that we all embark on. The methodology and associated tool will provide indicative cost estimates for different scenarios for improving uh, wash service uh, levels in order to reduce the potential of future cholera outbreaks in cholera hotspots, uh, in cholera, of course, endemic uh, countries. Uh, the target audience is the national or local governments with support from GTFCC partners, of course. And the tool will have um, several uh, functions that it's trying uh, to achieve. It should be applied as part of the uh, NCP development process and will take into account different intervention scenarios. It should be simple enough. It should target key actions and finally provide guidance on service level targets, yet allow for flexibility for the users to be able to establish uh, respective targets. What has been achieved to date? Um, we've been successfully able to engage a consulting firm, namely ASA, uh, to develop uh, the wash cost of plan methodology for color hotspots. Initially, the plan was to pilot in two countries. However, unfortunately, due to the COVID-imposed restrictions, it disrupted the project and it was only possible uh, to complete the first pilot in Goma in 2020. Um, the work at large involved three phases. It evolved in three phases. Phase one entailed the literature review and preliminary analysis of cholera data. And it was key to portraying a clear picture of wash access and to identify potential priority areas for wash interventions. Uh, just to keep it simple, you know, in Goma, about 70% of the cases were concentrated in six health zones in 2019. Cost of project uh, are in place for water supply, but there is very limited information uh, regarding sanitation. The second phase is the data collection. And it's case to, um, and, and it entails uh, conducting household surveys. For example, in Goma, we conducted over 580 household surveys, conducted um, 18 focus group uh, discussions, and interviewed 18 uh, key informants. Then finally, uh, five sites were visited, and water samples uh, analysis and GPS data uh, was also collected. Um, last yet not least, the final or third phase, uh, the action prioritization and costing, a risk factor analysis through a retrospective cost control study um, should be conducted, a costing tool based on the risk factors analysis and using standard bills of quantities to cost the proposed actions uh, will or should be developed. Um, the ESA pilot study was developed as a proof of concept. However, uh, to date, UNICEF and CDC share some concerns over the methodology and results obtained from the first pilot in, in Goma. Uh, the costing part of the project uh, was supposed to be the focus of the second pilot and needs further work. UNICEF and CDC are currently working jointly to resume the work. It had stopped the engagement with ESA due to um, a few admin constraints was stopped, however, it will resume shortly. However, currently together with CDC, we are working to define um, a detailed terms of reference for the second phase of the work. 
Uh, we are currently working together with CDC to define detailed terms of reference for the next phase, as mentioned earlier. And the possible options that we have here include the following. Number one, use of baseline approach only, so only limited to the baseline approach. And, and this approach would help advance a more standard methodology, easier to replicate in countries, but it is likely that the financial implications for the costed plans will be very high if a baseline approach only is used. The second scenario is use of a mixed baseline approach with wash access targeting uh, based on household uh, survey data. This will provide an additional layer of geographical prioritization, but would require additional data collection and will not provide information for prioritization based on types of intervention meaning access to water versus sanitation or hygiene. Finally, the last scenario we are considering is use of a mix of baseline approach with risk factor analysis. The benefits of this approach, quite frankly, is to offer a second prioritization level based on type of interventions. However, a review of the methodology would be required to reduce some methodological bias identified with the first pilot and this would probably require countries and partners to seek external expertise to conduct the work, which will naturally lead to more complexity and less replicability of, uh, of the tool. But with that, I thank you for your attention and uh, very happy to take uh, questions. Thank you very much.